Despite their small size, insects are rich in protein. Normally, birds and mammals must be small to make specializing in insects worthwhile. This trend changed with the arrival and evolution of eusociality in many clades of insects, including termites, cockroaches, and ants. Once millions of insects could be reliably harvested from a single location, which began in the late Jurassic but was widespread in Chimere by the late Cretaceous, the game changed, and many clades specialized in bulk feeding. Earliest of these specialists were the Alvarosaurids, dinosaurs which originated on Earth but became more diverse and derived during the Tyrant Dynasty. These bird-like theropods had no teeth, long snouts, and sticky tongues to get at the bounty within the nests of termites, ants, and a clade of eusocial cockroaches called conifer mites found only in Chimere. They were generally small, with long legs to make travel efficient, while also outpacing predators that knew termite mounds were a reliable lure for prey. When faced with predators and competition with each other, two solutions were reached. Some alvarosaurids became speed feeders, their snouts going longer and tongues more sophisticated to get a meal's worth as rapidly as possible. The tops of their beaks are highly sensitive to the point of tremor sense, and a few buzzing chatters of their jaw against wood or soil provides a fairly detailed picture of the interior. They were the most widespread and successful insect specialists. To this day, they remain most common in this niche, with flocks of tiny udi following any insectivore that might open a mound for them. Several of these have independently been domesticated by chimerans for the purposes of pest control. The other solution was size. Like whales growing large, supported by localized marine concentrations, size aids in both harvest and efficient travel. They were big enough to dominate a termite nest and to fend off most predators with fierce kicks. For a long time, these giant alvarosaurids dominated with minimal competition. Pangolins arrived during Earth's early Oligocene, one of the few harvests during the Tyrant Dynasty. They immediately diversified as arboreal specialists in termites and conifer mites, outcompeting many of the established reptiles and nontherian mammals. For the second half of the Tyrant Dynasty, Alvarosaurids and Pangolins established a dynasty of their own. The Pangolins took the trees, while the Alvarosaurids took the open territories. There was some overlap with giant Pangolins on the prairies and some Alvarosaurids becoming respectable climbers, and other animals took some ecological scraps on the fringes, but these two clades held a clear dominance. Even after the dynastic extinction, the eastern continent retains this relationship, as they were not hit nearly as hard by the cascading contextual changes as the others given their general ecological independence. The story is quite different in the known world. Each region of Earth has a few species of eusocial insect specialists, and each of the dozen or so harvests since the dynastic extinction brought more and more members of an increasingly diverse and competitive caste. Canids, hyenas, ungulates, primates, afrotherians, marsupials, woodpeckers, bears, and xenarthrans, along with a new wave of pangolins, were just some of the creatures that came to the table in the known world. Fresh specialists also came from the eastern continent, like the giant pangolin, and as the western continent and Picardia both converged into the known world, their own insectivores, like firebirds and multituberculates, were added to the mix. Mostly because of how difficult it can be to move from one tree to the next, the forests are generally less competitive, and the common pangolin remains the most widespread and successful arboreal specialist, focused mostly on conifer mites. They share this niche with a range of firebirds, small anteaters, woodpeckers, and multituberculates in their southern range, with a more diverse cast of birds and mammals to the north, although the common pangolin is widely considered the preeminent arboreal insect specialist. As is the case in much of the known world, 
The prairies are ecologically unstable due to so many species vying for the eusocial insectivore niche. Each becomes specialized for a particular role. When the context changes, even slightly, another species will take its place. Localized extinctions were very common. Each harvest brought not only numeric competition, but a plethora of diseases that spread quickly throughout these competitive and close proximity feeding sites. A group of fox-like early dogs found widespread success, but were reduced to a single species, the Etacan, with the introduction of the Ardwolf to this niche, when a benign virus in the Ardwolves was lethal to the competing canids. Although most Xenarchthrin insect specialists took to the trees, one notable exception came in the form of the Goliath Anteater. This mighty animal follows in the footsteps of the giant pangolins that were at that point extinct in the known world. They became massive and more efficient travelers between termite nests, and dominate feeding sites when they arrive. In a fairly short period of time they became massive, with the modern species often reaching a thousand pounds. They are surprisingly fast, able to gallop at over 35 miles per hour over a long period of time. They can be quite aggressive, charging and slashing at predators with long claws backed by powerful arms. They are the great enforcers of the termite mounds, chasing off and fighting a range of predators disturbing their feeding, and will also attack insectivores that disturb the peace. They were by far the largest of the niche until a new species of giant pangolin arrived from the eastern continent about a million years ago. These draconic monsters can weigh up to two tons. Although one might think they might be violently competitive with the anteater, they often form a long-standing relationship, with an entourage of smaller insectivores in tow. The pair are in many ways keystone species in this community, as a living construction vehicle, the pangolin will tear down trees infested with termites and dig into nests. Once they have had their fill, which admittedly can take a while, they will let the dozen or so species in their shadow enjoy under the watchful eye of the anteater. Given how much these giants need to eat, neither are territorial. They are constantly on the move, seeking out new feeding opportunities. Whenever they come into town, the resident insectivores know a smorgasbord is on the horizon, with the clever Udi often gathering to take them directly to the best feeding site. The arrival of the giant pangolin served as a stabilizer in this chaotic niche, especially in conjunction with the anteater. There is still high species turnover, competition, and disease. Having a great provider and defender has established a general sense of peace and stability. The known world is one of change, but for the time being, this relationship between the Goliath Anteater and Giant Pangolin holds together what would otherwise be a messy and chaotic community. In future videos we will explore these animals in greater detail, along with insectivores that specialize in other types of insects and arthropods, trying to keep these videos to a more manageable length. Thank you all so much for watching, and please do consider supporting me on Patreon. Until next time, take care. Cheers, folks!